Hey guys, so this week I'll be answering some Q&A questions from a few months ago. I know it's really late, but I wanted to catch up with my lore videos first. So thanks for your patience, and yeah, let's get right into it. So before I answer the main group of questions, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions which I've been asked really often. So the first question is, where are you from? So I'm from Malta, which is a tiny tiny island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. We're kind of like Numenor, though we're probably a lot smaller and we haven't sunk yet, which is a good thing for this channel. So yeah, don't feel too bad if you never heard of it, your city is probably larger than my entire country. The second question I'm asked often is, what footage do I use in my videos? So the video footage is usually from a game called The Lord of the Rings Online, and yeah, it's a great game and an awesome way to experience Tolkien's world, and I'd highly encourage you to check it out. So now we're going to go to the main group of questions. So the first question is, how did you first encounter Middle-earth and what books are your favorite? From Sharon Kofo. So my first memories are probably my uncle reading The Hobbit to me, when I think I was around 8 or 9 years old. After that, I think he tried to read The Lord of the Rings to me, but yeah, it was a total loss. I'm pretty sure that I used to take the title quite literally, as I thought it was about a guy trying to collect all these rings. Anyway, after that, I remember watching The Return of the King at the cinema, and now that I think of it, I must have been around 9 also back then, which is pretty young to watch it. Now for the second part of your question, which book is my favorite, I'd have to say The Return of the King if I just wanted some light reading, or plot-wise I'd have to go for The Silmarillion. However, The Silmarillion is not easy to read, and it requires so much attention and concentration, so if I wanted some chill reading, it wouldn't be on the top of my list. Okay, so next question. If you could pick one aspect of Middle-earth lore to be expanded upon, what would it be? So my first answer would probably have been something like the Blue Wizards, the Void, the Barrowites, the fate of King Eärendil. However, when I think about it, these are some of the most interesting topics to discuss. And I feel that this is so, because their lore is so vague and unfinished, so it engages the audience a lot more, since we'd be trying to piece it all together and answer its mysteries. It also makes the story feel much more alive, as it would be quite similar to the real world with its own mysteries and unsolved puzzles, and so I guess I'd rather have these stories remain unfinished. Anyway, back to your question, I'd have to go with parts of the lore that we know nothing about, or very little. Perhaps something about the Darklands, which are an entirely different continent, or lore about the story of the other dwarven clans. So on to our next question, which is, who is your favorite character and why? From Drios TB. Okay, so there are loads of incredible characters, which I admire a lot, such as Aragorn, Finrod, and Beren. However, I really like fallen or tragic characters, or even anti-heroes. I feel it makes them much more three-dimensional and human. So considering this, I'd have to say my favorite characters would be something like Boromir, Feanor, Maedhros, as they represent the inner conflict that people have within them. Okay, so now one of my favorite questions and the one which really confused me the most, I'd say. So it is, what is your favorite magical artifact in all of Arda? And if it existed in the real world, what would you use it for? From Luke Skywalker II. Okay, so my first thought was the Palantiri, which would be awesome. However, on giving it some more thought, I think realistically it's just a less useful Skype call with perhaps an added cool factor. A mitral vest is also kind of out of fashion at this point, so it would be a bit redundant. So I guess one of the Silmarils would be pretty cool to have, or the Nauglamir, though it would probably be something you just keep as a family heirloom and not wear outside, for obvious reasons. Okay, so next question. Would you ever consider expanding your library of content and exploring other fantasies, from Octavio or Tiz? Uh, so in regard to this, yeah for sure I really love fantasy in general and I kind of like any type of lore. I mean The Elder Scrolls has awesome lore, so does Dark Souls, The Witcher, Game of Thrones, and I'd like to explore them all eventually. So yeah, I wouldn't mind expanding, though I wouldn't be sure if I should keep it on this channel or create a new channel for this different lore. I'll see in the future, I guess. So on to the next question. What is your favorite race? From Sir Panzer. I'd have to go with the dwarves, I think. I like their characters a lot. Their toughness, their love for treasure, and how their stubbornness and determination 
um, it often takes priority over rational thought. They're also not the type of race to give up or fall into despair, instead they just look ahead and work towards their goal. I just find them really amusing that whenever I come across dwarves in the books, I can't help but smile at their antics. Okay, so next one. If somehow you could live in Arda, what place would it be and what timeline would you live in? So I'd love to say that I'd be some fierce warrior of Gondor or some other exotic place in Arda. However, realistically, I'd probably prefer living in the Undying Lands. You know, you're safe from all the wars and it's the most beautiful place in Middle-earth. Regarding the timeline, I'd probably say anything after the First Age is good. You know, you'd have gotten rid of all the trouble of Morgoth and it's a lot safer, more at peace. You know, you can live your life happily there. Okay, so next question. Would you like to have seen more of Sauron in the books and films? Or do you think his character is handled correctly? So in response to this, I'd have to say no. I think he was handled very well and if he was featured more prominently, it might have shifted the focus onto him rather than Frodo's journey to destroy the ring, which I feel would have somewhat lessened the magic of the story and yeah, it would have made it much more generic. Okay, so next question. What are your thoughts on the show that is currently in development and what would you like to see in it? From Mia Getty. So to be honest, at the start I had much higher hopes and I don't think that Aragorn's storyline is a great place to start from. I think they picked this to play it safe, though I actually feel it might be detrimental, as the fans will have a lot of nostalgia for old characters, older actors who used to play these characters, and at least I personally would prefer seeing something new altogether. Maybe something like the story of Arnor, or the fall of Numenor. However, I believe we should support them, as if they're successful and they do a good job, we'll get to see so much more of Middle-earth in our lives, and that's a pretty awesome thing. Okay, so the next question is, what is your favorite Lord of the Rings movie from Noah Lime? So my favorite would be the second movie, The Two Towers. I love the idea behind the Ents, the Rohirrim, and I think the Battle of Helm's Deep is the greatest battle in the trilogy, at least from a cinematic point of view. Okay, so on to the next one. Did you ever want to write your own book or series from Nicole Miller? So I actually was working on one since I was 14 years old, though I'm taking it really slow. And if I ever get a cool idea, I make a note of it, I have this diary and eventually I'd like to get it done, and hopefully I will in the future. Perhaps sometime I'll post a couple of chapters onto our Facebook group and you can give me your thoughts on it. Okay, so next question. What's your favorite quote in The Lord of the Rings from The Onion King? So first of all, I'm honored to meet you, Sir Onion King, and thanks for your question. So there are quite a few quotes in The Lord of the Rings which I find inspiring to say the least. Though my personal favorite is one from Eowyn, when Aragorn asks her what she's afraid of, and she answers, A cage, to stay behind bars, until use and old age accept them, and all chance of doing great deeds is gone, beyond recall or desire. I feel that this quote is quite relevant to modern life, that we tend to delay things that we'd want to do or want to learn by getting stuck in a routine that we don't really enjoy, and later once we're old we kind of give up and accept that we can't do it anymore, as it's no longer physically possible. This could be anything from traveling or expressing creativity, but yeah, it's something I hold to heart. Okay, so we've got three questions left. The first one is, what's the most fun video you've made from Hapa CSF? Um, probably, I'd say something which tried to solve a mystery, perhaps the Barrow Whites, the Blue Wizards, but out of these, I'd say my favorite one to make was the Silent Watchers. It was really cool to research. Okay, so on to the next question. Which member of the Fellowship do you resonate most with? From Lavender Twilight. I think I'd have to say it's Sam. He's the type of character that tries to be an everyday hero. He's loyal to his friends, he looks out for them, he doesn't give up, and he does his best to adapt to new challenges. And these are qualities which I admire a lot and would strive for. So yeah, I think yeah, Sam is pretty good. So on to the last question. What do you feel about the fourth age and beyond? From the Pi confirmed. Well, I think for certain it would be a lot safer than the other ages. You know, you don't have any big dark lord. However, it always made me sad how some of the nicest things in Middle-earth were doomed to fade away, such as the elves, dwarves, hobbits, ants. I kind of wish that somehow they'd live on and perhaps even flourish. Anyway friends, this wraps up the Q&A video and I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to apologize once again for delaying it and yeah, hopefully the next one will be made much faster. If you've got any questions or would like to share your own thoughts on these questions, leave a comment below. 
and yeah future questions for the next q and a are welcome just drop them here or on twitter or our facebook group wherever you like just contact me in some way since my next video will most likely be published next friday i'd like to wish you all a very merry christmas filled with wonderful memories and perhaps a bit of lord of the rings lore on the side